Welcome to another one of my quotient rule videos. In this video, I'm going to go over a harder quotient rule example. And if you need any extra help with calculus, algebra, statistics, whatever you need, I do offer live tutoring and homework solutions. So check out my website at mathmeeting.com if you're interested in some extra help. But let's get started right away with this example. So here in this example, we need to find the derivative of the function x squared minus one cubed all over x squared plus one. And the reason why this example is a little bit harder is because we need to use the quotient rule and we need to use the chain rule. And there's gonna be a ton of algebra involved as well, but I'm gonna go through this step by step and I'm hoping by the end of this video that you'll think that these problems are not that bad. So let's get started right away. So if you haven't seen my first quotient rule video, uh, the reason why we have to use the quotient rule is because we have a quotient. We have two things being divided with each other. The x squared minus one cubed is being divided with the x squared plus one. Whenever you have two things being divided with each other, we have to use the quotient rule to take the derivative. And what I like to do to make this easier is to label these two things. So I'll label the x squared minus one cubed the high, and I'm gonna label the x squared plus one the low. And now we can use the quotient rule formula to take the derivative. And the formula is low d high minus high d low all over the square of what's below. And what this means is the low multiplied by the derivative of the high minus the high times the derivative of the low, all divided by the low squared. All right, so now at this point, the only thing we have to do is plug everything into our formula. So I'm gonna plug in x squared minus one cubed into everywhere we see the word high, and I'm going to plug in x squared plus one uh, into everywhere we see the word low. And at this point, the only thing we have to do is simplify this derivative as much as possible. So to start off, let's take the derivative of x squared minus one cubed. Now notice how we're taking the derivative of a parentheses followed by an exponent of three. Parentheses followed by exponent means that we have to use the chain rule to take the derivative. So let's do this, let's use the chain rule. Now the first thing we'll do is take our exponent of three and bring it to the front and multiply it in front of the parentheses. And our new exponent is gonna be subtracted by one. So three minus one is equal to two. And now we need to use the chain rule, which means we have to multiply everything by the derivative of the inside of the parentheses. So the derivative of x squared minus one. And the derivative of x squared is just two x. The derivative of negative one is equal to zero. So this is just going to be equal to two x. All right, so now let's move over to the right side of our equation. And let's take the derivative of x squared plus one. Now the derivative of x squared is just two x. The derivative of one is just zero. So this is just equal to two x. All right, so now we have some algebra to simplify this derivative even further. Now the first thing we can do is multiply the two x and the three. Two uh, x times three is equal to six x. And well, I will put this in the front. All right, so now at this point we can factor. Now notice how in the front term we have a six x and in the back term we have a two x. So they have a two x in common that we can factor out. And also notice how the front term has two x squared minus ones, and the back term has three x squared minus ones, so they have at least two x squared minus ones in common. So we can factor out x squared minus one squared. All right, so now that we've factored, what do we have left over in each of our terms? In our first term, we started with a six x, but we factored out a two x, so we have a three left over. The x squared plus one stays the same since we did not factor out an x squared plus one. And we also have two x squared minus ones, which we factored out already. So they will just go away. And in our second term, we have three x squared minus ones, but we factored out two of them already. So we have one left over, but you never put a one exponent. So this just becomes 
x squared minus 1, and the 2x uh, will go away because we factored out a 2x already. So we're just left with x squared minus 1 for our second term. All right, so now what I'm going to do is multiply the 3 with the x squared plus 1. So 3 times x squared is equal to 3x squared. 3 times positive 1 is equal to positive 3. And at this point, we can get rid of the parentheses of the 3x squared plus 3 because there's no negative sign in front of that parentheses. So this just stays the same, 3x squared plus 3. And the next parentheses of x squared minus 1 does have a negative sign in front of it. So this means all of the signs will switch. So the positive x squared becomes a negative x squared, and the negative one becomes a positive one. All right, now that we got rid of our parentheses, now we can combine our like terms. Uh, we have 3x squared minus x squared, uh, which is equal to 2x squared. And we also have 3 plus 1, which is equal to 4. All right, so now notice how we can factor again. We have a 2x squared and a 4, which means we have a 2 in common. So we can factor out a 2, and left over inside of the parentheses, uh, we're left with x squared and a positive 2. All right, so bear with me here. This can still be simplified even further. Uh, the 2 and the 2x can be multiplied with each other. A 2 times 2x is equal to 4x. And this is our solution. We cannot do anything more. The derivative f prime of x is equal to 4x multiplied times x squared minus 1 squared multiplied times x squared plus 2 all over x squared plus 1 squared. So I hope this video gave you a better idea on how to use the quotient rule. If you want to keep on learning about derivatives, check out my next video. And once again, if you do need any extra help, I do offer live tutoring and homework solutions as well. The link is in the screen. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one.